Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to get Debian set up in a Cloud Init instance of a Proxmox VM. Cloud Init instances are a lot easier to deploy on Proxmox, so we can deploy them faster and easier with less setup time. The first thing you're going to need to do to get a Cloud Init instance of Debian set up is to download an image file. To do so, at the debian.org homepage, Go ahead and click Other Downloads. Here at Other Downloads, you can scroll down and you'll see Debian Cloud Images. Now there's a few different choices here and you will see local QEMU. If you're a keen-eyed viewer that knows a little bit about Proxmox, you'll know Proxmox uses a lot of QEMU for their virtual machine instances. But if you try that, you're not going to be successful with fully setting up your Cloud Init. Instant. Although this VM will run because it's a QCOW2 image, you're going to be unable to enter your username, password, as well as your DNS configuration setting. Amazon won't run and Microsoft Azure won't run to my knowledge. These may be able to be configured and set up, but to my knowledge, they're not as easy. Our easiest option here that's going to allow Proxmox to work correctly is going to be the OpenStack provider. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to choose our AMD Intel 64 4-bit image, and we have a choice between QCOW2 and RAW. As we know, or as I know, the easiest way is going to be to choose RAW, although you will get pretty similar mileage for QCOW2. So let's mouse over this RAW, right-click, and copy link address. Your terminology may be different, but have the same meaning if you're using a Mac or a Linux computer. Once we have that copied, let's go to our Proxmox web interface and select our local drive and select import, just as I have done here. Now, if you don't already have import because you've upgraded from a version of eight or whatnot, first check that you have version 9.1.2 or higher, then Go to Data Center, select Storage, select your local drive, hit Edit, and here at this drop-down, highlight Import, just as I've done. So I will be exiting this screen, but you want to press OK at that point. Once you have done so, Import should appear, and you can start working with the new Import feature of your Proxmox server. We're going to download this image using Download from URL. So we're going to click Download from URL, just as I did. Right-click and paste our link in. And we're going to query URL and press down. This will download our file, or image file, directly to our server. Okay, so now that our download has finished, let's go ahead and close the window. And you can see the new Debian image shows up right here. Now we're ready to start the process of creating the VM that's going to hold our new image. So let's go ahead and hit create VM. We'll give it a name. I'll just call mine test here. Um, Press next, we'll hit do not use any media, pressing next. We can check QEMU guest agent at this point and leave everything else alone. Pressing next, let's go ahead and remove the drive that comes as default for the VM and press down here at import. Local should show up instantly for import storage. So all we're gonna need to do is select our image and let's select the Debian 13 and go ahead and check discard. I also like to change our bus type to SATA. Pressing next, let's go ahead and give it two cores. And just because it seems to make performance better, let's change the CPU type to host. And pressing next, let's give this 4096. You're not required to, two gigs will be enough, but I like to up, up that to the four gigs and give ourselves a little bit of overhead. Now we can press next and change any networking settings settings that we might need to change. Pressing next will give us a chance to confirm everything and we can go ahead and hit finish. Now we want to make sure that we don't start this VM up on boot because we're still going to have more configuration to do since we're going to be using the cloud init features. So we'll go ahead, we'll highlight our VM and we're going to go to hardware first. We are going to have to fill out the cloud init settings, but at this point, if we were to click on cloud init, it would give us an error message. So so first we have to go to hardware and fix the problems that are going to give us that error message. So what we're going to need is a cloud init drive to store all of the cloud init settings in. So up here at add, we're going to hit the drop down and we're going to select cloud init drive. And let's again change this to SATA. And for storage type, let's select local.
local LVM or ZFS depending on the file system that you're using for your image storing. And we can go ahead and press add. Now that we've added that, when we go to cloud init, we're able to start filling out settings. The first one we need to configure is user. And let's just give ours VE. Then we'll go ahead and enter a password. And then we're asked, and then basically we can leave the rest of these alone. If we do want to use SSH, we will have to enter a public key here. Now it's not necessary for getting this VM up and running, but SSH won't work and SSH via a password won't work with your default configuration settings for CloudInit. So you will have to upload that key if you so choose. Now, the last setting we need to pay attention to is IP config. And what we're gonna be asked to do here is enter either a static IP address or DHCP. I'm gonna be choosing DHCP today just simply because if we turn this into a template, I want this to be able to automatically deploy and kind of do its thing. Now, if I was setting up a server, I'd want to make sure I set up a static IP address and gave it the correct CIDR notation. If you don't give it a CIDR notation after the IP address, Proxmox won't allow you to continue. If you don't know CIDR notations, your slash 24 is going to be really your default network for most people that are using like out of the box equipment. So at this point, we'll hit OK. Mine changes to DHCP and we can press regenerate image. And and we're ready to go ahead and fire this up. So let's head over to console and hit start now. Notice we are getting an output on the screen and our VM is indeed booting up and we're asked to log in. Since we called this test, test is going to be our host name. So you see it as test login. We can go ahead and enter what we configured for a username and our password. And we're logged in. Now, usually for the first one or two minutes, APT is spotty or maybe unaccessible. So you just want to keep that in mind. But if we were to run to sudo apt update, we can see that we indeed did install all of our updates for this image by the time that I entered that command. So when and last thing we need to check to finish getting our VM ready is to head here to summary. Now here at summary, you notice under IPs, it says guest agent not working. If you remember when we created our VM, we checked the box for QEMU guest agent, but the agent itself isn't installed on the VM. So Proxmox has no software to communicate with. Let's head back to the console and just enter sudo apt install QEMU dash guest dash agent dash Y. And if you get everything correct, you'll see it installed just as mine did right there. Now at this point, let's go ahead and shut this VM down. And once this VM shuts down, you will be able to start it back up. But we do have to do a full shutdown, not a restart. So once our VM has shut down, we can go ahead and press start now here at the console or a press start up here and basically boot it back up. And with it booted back up, when we go to summary this time, you can see that we have assigned it an IP address or at least the IP address information has been output for the VM summary here on Proxmox. So at this point, you're ready to start whatever project that you want to use your VM for, whether it's installing Podman, Docker, turning it into a pie hole, or installing some other more obscure software that you may want to run in your home lab. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we're definitely able to get a Cloud Init instance of Debian up and running. Although I use Ubuntu in a lot of my tutorials, I do feel that Debian is a really good, strong choice and maybe even a little bit more of a purist choice as Debian is what Ubuntu is built off of and Debian is not a for-profit company as Canonical is. So they have a little less reason to try to scrape you for data or harass you for subscriptions or any of the things that for-profit companies do that you usually avoid in the open source land. As always, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and are able to now start using Debian as a cloud init in your Proxmox server.